And I think as we, you know, move on to uh, other stories, I think we'll, we'll see how lucky we are that, you know, currently Chicago, you know, dodged a bullet in regards for Amazon. Now, I know, Paul, you've been following the story uh, very closely. You know, Mayor Rahm Emanuel was willing to give a huge tax break to Amazon mm -hmm. to come here. Basically, we were talking about this earlier, actually. Yeah. We, we were saying Wisconsin was the state that ultimately promised Amazon the most money. What did, what did they promise? I them? believe it was about uh, $10 billion. That's insane. Yeah. That's an insane amount of money to promise them. It's obvious that Amazon went with New York and Virginia, like a split headquarters for headquarters two for them, because Jeff Bezos sits on a citizen review board at the Pentagon because he's working on, on the CIA, a, yeah. No, he's got a contract with the CIA okay. through Amazon to run their web servers, but right. he sits on a board at the Pentagon. But now he's, it looks like he's planning to make an even larger deal with the Pentagon. And it very much seems like this entire deal was a way of him going, I have two spots I want to put this headquarters. How can I get a better price? I know. I'll pretend there's an open competition. I'll ask all the cities in uh, the United States to tell me how much money they're willing to give me, which I would call directly corporate socialism, where the taxpayers fund the wealthiest, most profitable uh, companies on the planet. Mm -hmm. And we'll go through this entire thing. Now I have data on what all these cities are willing to offer me, and I'm sure other companies were watching that as well. And then beyond that, you have these so in a sense, he would have gotten a better deal where he already put it. Is he lives in New York? I believe he lives in New York, and he has this contract that he's about to get with the Pentagon that only he and Amazon could really even uh, take to begin with. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh wow, these two headquarters go where he would have probably wanted them already. He probably just got a better mm -hmm. price by, I would even say, showing not even the U.S. but the planet just how easily our cities are bought. Right. And the headline actually here, though, is um, you talk about, I love this term, corporate socialism, because it really is taxpayers giving the wealthiest companies in the world more money than they could possibly need to do their business. They were promised $2.1 billion for the headquarters split between uh, New York and Virginia. But if you add on just the inherent subsidies that they'll get, you know, based on current regulation and current tax code, that number more than doubles. It's, ta you're, it's like $4.6 billion in total taxpayer subsidies to Amazon, right. one of the most powerful companies in the world that has literally the richest person in the world as its CEO needs an extra $4.6 billion in taxpayer money to make sure that they, they got real hard times over there, Amazon. I got to make sure they make ends meet. And on, and on that note, we just had a thing where Amazon was finally like, okay, we'll raise our minimum wage to 15. It's not like they couldn't afford more than that. It's not like they had to cut the benefits of other people. But the Stock Bezos Act forced them. But the, the, the point is that, you, to, to Paul's point, you have these companies that can afford basically anything they want, but it's better. Like we said before, it's on previous shows, one of the best investments you can possibly give if you, uh, you are a business, is to invest in lobbyists, which then invest in politicians, which give about a thousand to one return on investment, which nothing else can match. So if you're Bezos and you're like, I can get four billion dollars via subsidy, via direct money, or like even places where like we won't even collect taxes on your employees, you collect the taxes on your own employees. We'll let you do this. We'll rename our we'll rename our city. Uh, one mayor was even like, I'll rename myself <laughs> if you can do that. It's, it's, so it's, it's corporate uh, one percent rule. It's it, what it is. What it is is it's it's. it's to show just how corrupt and inept our system is, where basically we have legalized corruption. And you know, thanks to Citizens United and McCutcheon's decision, companies like Amazon can do whatever they want. They can buy our elected officials whenever they want. And these elected officials, whether they are Democrat or Republican, will snap to attention, say, yes, sir, and continue screwing us over. Because who's left with the burden? Us, the working class uh, communities, all these people who are struggling to make ends meet, and even some of Amazon's workers, you know, you guys just touched upon it earlier, you know, they get paid very little and they, they got very little benefits. Now, recently, uh, some of the wages have been increased, but again, at the end of the day, are their lives still better? And the answer is probably no. But I think it's not even are their lives better, because that's a big component that we've, we talked about and it was really good. And yeah. I, you got you know, got to give credit where credit's due. They did raise the minimum wage again. Yeah. They did lower benefits for other people. But it's the very concept that 
they can be taking in $4 billion ostensibly from taxpayer dollars. And you can say on one hand, but they won't raise the minimum wage without having to be pushed to do so. But I think on the other hand, it goes to show a lot of what we've seen with the new progressives that have come into office where it's, oh, how are you going to pay to make sure those homeless people get houses? How are you going to pay to make sure that these poor families can put food on the table? How are you going to pay for things that help the middle class, for things that help the working class, the working poor? That's a thing that we have to always know before we go anything hang any on, further. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Jeff Bezos needs $4 billion. We, we, could, we got that money. Exactly. Or, or, or let's, or let's not money. forget the military industrial complex where we could spend billions of dollars, trillions of dollars, yes. on the Joint Strike right. Fighter that doesn't even do its job, but there's money for it because you got to help out the military industrial complex. You got to make sure that they get their money to build this Joint Strike Fighter that is incapable of flying at night, but they expect it to do X amount of things, so many things that it's literally impossible. But when you bring up the mention of funding our public schools, when you mention about uh, creating a strong infrastructure plan, uh, livable wages, or either that's uh, you know college, uh, you know uh, student uh, debt forgiveness, uh, affordable health care. We we just don't have. How the are you going to pay for those how, topics? How are we going to pay for? How are we going to do that? Now the, the rest of the international community, many of our allies across the sea, uh, can can have these programs. They have single payer health care. They have free college. Right, we have they have a strong examples infrastructure of these program. things working well. And we're stuck in this mode where we have to, we feel compelled to pay the already wealthiest people in the country um, money to do whatever it is they're doing. And they, they usually, I'm sorry, I'm trying to, I'm getting to a point. They usually promise, oh, we're going to have jobs. If we need jobs, we'll bring jobs in. Mm -hmm. And somebody made the point, I forget who made it on Twitter. It's like, sorry, New York, Amazon's not bringing 5,000 jobs to your city. Amazon is bringing 5,000 new residents who already have jobs to your city. 5,000? Well, I, I, I remember uh, Bezos saying he was going to bring 50,000. Yeah. Wow, that, that, that got cut down. Well, that quick. was, remember when we went to uh, Foxconn, they were originally like, hey, we're going to do, what was it, 25,000 jobs? And they're like, no, 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 I mean 13,000, I mean 10,000, I mean five. I mean, we might actually just bring in people from China. You know sure. what? It, that's very interesting that you bring that up, that all the jobs are being cut down, because sooner or later, uh, as people notice the price of Foxconn that's in Wisconsin, the price for that facility kept going up and up and up, as well as all the tax breaks that they were getting. They were getting this wonderful package, and at the end of the day, less jobs, but the burden is going to be pushed upon the working class families in Wisconsin. Same Almost thing is going to happen to the people in New York. Same thing is going to happen to people in Virginia in regards to the Amazon headquarters. Yep. And we're always getting pushed around. And it's almost as if the jobs are an irrelevant afterthought around what's actually happening, which is a group of politicians and business leaders coming together to make a mutually beneficial agreement where they get corporate donations so they can remain in office and the corporations again get that thousand to one return and get a huge amount of money put into law by uh, these politicians and then they both pretend like they're doing it in order to help the people that we both know they don't care about but in reality they're just making some extra That's money for themselves. It's a rhetorical point to hide behind. Yeah. It's funny. It's almost as if when, it's, when you're talking about helping uh, the poor and the middle class, it's how do you pay for that. If you're helping the rich and the powerful, it's look at all these jobs we're giving you. Right. Hard Lens Media.